Good evening. Scott is off tonight. I'm Margaret Brennan, and this is our Western Edition. The Secretary of Veterans Affairs did not have to wait long to learn his fate. President Obama called General Eric Shinseki to the Oval Office today and accepted his resignation. The president said both men agreed the VA needs new leadership. Margaret, top officials tell us there is no timetable for naming the new permanent VA secretary. Thanks, Major. Well, at that White House meeting today, Shinseki gave the president the initial findings of an internal audit of wait times at VA facilities around the country. More about that now from Wyatt Andrews. Wow, 35,000. Wyatt, thank you. Bob Schieffer is our CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent and anchor of Face the Nation. Bob, you've been following this very closely. What are your thoughts? Thanks, Bob. And I know Bob will have more about the VA scandal this Sunday on Face the Nation with Senators John McCain and Bernie Sanders. We turn now to a major medical story. A study out today says doctors have found a way to treat women for cancer without jeopardizing their ability to have children. We asked Dr. John LaPoop to tell us more. John, does this work for other women with other types of cancers? Well, that's the hope. Dr. Moore told me absolutely in the future that's going to be the next thing to try. And imagine for all the women out there who are getting chemotherapy who are of childbearing years, to have this possibility of maintaining their fertility is, is just a great, a great thing. Some hope. Some hope. Thank hope you very much. Great. Well, Medicare will, for the first time, cover the cost of some sex change operations. Today, the Department of Health and Human Services reversed its ban on covering the procedures, ruling in favor of a 74-year-old Army veteran who wants Medicare to pay for a sex change. The surgery can cost as much as $50,000. Late today, the NBA tentatively approved the $2 billion sale of the L.A. Clippers to former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer. With this deal in place, the league intends to withdraw charges to strip Donald Sterling of his ownership. Ben Tracy in Los Angeles has the latest. Thanks, Ben. Well, today, the State Department confirmed a U.S. citizen carried out a suicide bombing in Syria. He lived in Florida and was in his 20s. His name has not been released. An al-Qaeda affiliate says he was killed last Sunday in an attack on Syrian government troops. He's believed to be the first American suicide bomber to die fighting in Syria. Coming up, what Hillary Clinton says about the Benghazi attack in her new book. China's expecting a boom in births after easing its one-child limit and an unusual end to the national spelling bee when the CBS Evening News continues. Excerpts leaked out today from Hillary Clinton's upcoming new book in which she defends her handling of the 2012 terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya that killed four Americans. The former Secretary of State accuses critics of trying to politicize the tragedy. Her book, entitled Hard Choices, is published by Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. Nancy Cordes has the details. Thanks, Nancy. Well, President Obama announced another personnel change today. Jay Carney, his chief spokesman the past three and a half years, is stepping down. Carney is a former reporter for Time magazine, and he said he hasn't decided what he'll do next. His deputy, Josh Ernest, will be the president's new press secretary. Something unusual happened at the National Spelling Bee. It ended last night in a T-I-E. First time that's happened in 52 years. Both Sriram and Anson each won $30,000. We'll be right back. China is hoping for a new baby boom after a landmark decision to loosen its limit of one child per family. This week, Three more provinces, including Henan, the most populous, said they will join dozens of others and allow some families to have a second child. Seth Doan met a couple that's thinking about it. Seth Doan, CBS News, Changsha, China. In Fresno, California, a Salvation Army worker battled temptation this week when he came upon a bag that had fallen from a Brinks armored truck. Inside was $125,000. Joe Cornell says he thought about what he might tell his grandkids and then return the cash. Today, Brinks gave him a $5,000 reward. Well, birthdays come just once a year. 
but this man celebrates one every day. Steve Hartman on the road is next. A lot of people have birthday traditions, but the subject of our final story has one that is off the hook. Steve Hartman paid him a call on the road. And I'll talk to you next year. Steve Hartman. Okay. On the road right. in Toledo, Ohio. Thanks okay. for calling. Please bye. Bye bye. That's the CBS Evening News. For Scott Pelley, I'm Margaret Brennan. Scott will be along Sunday on 60 Minutes. Good night.